What's up, everybody? We're looking again at Sarah Boone's case because something very interesting has come on the docket. So many of you sent it to me and you deciphered the bit of a code name. Somebody you guys know is mentioned in this motion. Her lawyers are all asking to get paid, but they're all asking to get paid more than the JAC seems to want to pay them. So how do we deal with multiple court-appointed attorneys who did the job, did the work, it didn't work out. They ask to be able to leave the case without completely finishing the job. Should they get the full flat fee? How do we deal with this in Florida with court-appointed private lawyers? Well, we're gonna learn about that in today's video. So let's jump into it. So we have a motion for attorney's fees. And of course, these are not for uh, Sarah Boone, but instead from the state because these were court-appointed lawyers, even though they were private lawyers. And Patricia Cashman is the one writing this motion. Patricia Cashman, <laughs> as the private court-appointed attorney in the above style case, files this motion for attorney's fees. The undersigned Cashman was duly appointed as counsel for defendant on February 9th. Counsel was the eighth attorney appointed and the fourth private court appointed attorney. The undersigned is now billing on this case, on this cause, because the case has reached a billable point. The JAC's response to the billing was to object to the flat fee amount of $15,000 for attorney's fees and the $1,800 for reimbursable costs expended by this attorney, and a hearing is requested. A copy of the objection letter is attached and marked as Exhibit 1. So we're going to hear what the JAC said. They're the ones that have to make a decision of who gets paid what. We've heard from them a bunch in this case about experts and different things and paying for the uh, investigator for Sarah Boone. Well, Cashman asked them for 15 grand and they said, no, they object. We're going to hear what they think should happen. Undersigned counsel represented the defendant over a four month period. Counsel spent well over 100 hours in four months. So not just 20 hours that she spent with Boone, but 100 hours. On said case, as evidenced by the attached certificate of time marked as Exhibit 2, which we're going to see what she billed for. Over 20 hours of those were spent with the defendant. Miss Boone was charged by information with second degree M. There was a vast amount of media attention to this case. Miss Boone was accused of putting her boyfriend in a suitcase where he died. There was a video of the incident that went viral. Counsel made preparing uh, this case a priority as the case had been pending since February of 2020. The final disposition of this case was the court entering an order that Ms. Boone had waived her right to counsel. So she jumped on it. She focused on it. She had other work, but she prioritized this because it was about to go to trial and it was very serious charges. There was a significant amount of discovery to review. Multiple CDs slash DVDs, paper discovery of over 400 pages of reports and statements, two bankers boxes of files obtained from previous counsels and background information on the relationship between the deceased and the defendant. Probably meaning like the criminal complaints back and forth. Um, but... We know there was a lot. Everybody's complained there's a lot, including Sarah Boone. The state listed 23 witnesses, two of whom were deposed by this counsel, and seven of whom were deposed by previous counsel. There were eight separate statements given by the defendant. Counsel also needed to review the media accounts that potential jurors may have seen. The case was heavily covered by Court TV, pretty big. News Nation, pretty big. Fox, pretty big, heard of them. Local news channels, some big. Orlando Sentinel, okay, that makes sense. But then we get to know your lawyer. Who's that? Who's know your lawyer? I don't know. Legal Bites, we know her. And Bruce Rivers, we know him. Did multiple stories on their channels. Many of the previously held court proceedings were televised and the letters written by the defendant were published and analyzed. The defendant wrote a 58-page letter to the court and had previously written multiple long letters to the court that counsel needed to review to determine the potential impact on the case and develop a strategy for jury selection. Counsel spent over 20 hours at the jail conferences with the client. So she's not wrong. And we're finding out firsthand that the lawyers preparing these cases have to know what's going on in the media, including YouTube. They want to know how people are looking at these cases. They want to see how the public is looking at this case. They want to know the right questions to ask during jury selection. And these types of conversations are incredibly important to them. And they have to know if they say, I've been watching lawyer, you know, what does that mean? If they say, I've been watching Maybe somebody that says Sarah Boone's guilty, 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 or Sarah Boone's innocent, innocent, innocent. Here's how it's proven. They want to know that. They want to know that. Knowledge is power, and it's readily available to these attorneys as they prepare for these cases. 
And I hope that no attorney is negatively affecting any case ever. I hope every attorney covering every case is pushing fairness, justice, looking at a case even-handed and, and teaching people how to be good jurors because then attorneys shouldn't have a problem if they've seen things on their channels. Undersigned counsel has submitted a voucher for JAC payment. Florida statute says a private attorney appointed by the court from the registry to represent a client is entitled to payment as provided in section 27503. 27503 says the JAC shall review an intended billing by private and court appointed counsel for attorney's fees based on a flat fee per case for uh, completeness and compliance with contractual statutory requirements. The commission may approve the intended bill for a flat fee per case for payment without approval by the court if the intended billing is correct. An intended billing that seeks compensation for any amount exceeding the flat fee uh, established for a particular type of representation as prescribed in the General Appropriations Act shall comply with subsections 11 and 12. The legislature recognized that on rare occasions, an attorney may receive a case that requires extraordinary and unusual effort. I wouldn't say 100 hours is. 100 hours in four months is a lot. Um, if counsel seeks compensation that exceeds the limits prescribed by law, he or she must file a motion with the chief judge for an order approving payment of attorney's fees in excess of these limits. If the chief, ju chief judge or designee finds that counsel has proved by competent and substantial evidence that the case required extraordinary and unusual efforts, the chief judge or designee shall order a compensation to be paid to the attorney at a percentage above the flat fee rate, depending on the extent of the unusual and extraordinary effort required. The percentage shall be only the rate necessary to ensure that the fees paid are not conf conf confiscatory uh, under the common law. The percentage may not exceed 200% of the established flat fee, absent a specific finding that 200% of the flat fee of the case would be confisc confiscatory. I'm never going to get that right. Uh, if the chief judge or designee determines 200% of the flat fee would be confiscatory, he or she shall order the amount of compensation using an hourly rate not to exceed $75 per hour for a non-capital case and $100 per hour for a capital case. That's not a lot, right? I think everybody knows that's not a lot for a lawyer, especially 75 bucks an hour for a case like this. However, the compensation calculated by using the hourly rate shall be only that the amount necessary to ensure that the total fees paid are not conf confiscatory. As a result of undersigned counsel's acceptance and work of the above styled case, counsel was unavailable to meet with several potential new clients who then hired other counsel. Opportunities to take on new clients had to be declined, resulting in a loss of fees. Because of what is outlined above and the work done by the attorney failing to pay the fees as requested would be confiscatory. Wherefore, it is respectfully requested the court enter an order approving the amount of $15,000 for fees and $1,800 for reimbursable costs for a total of $16,800, $16, directing the undersigned to be compensated by the State of Florida Justice Administrative Commission, JAC, and for such other relief as the court deems just and equitable. So what's she asking for? She's asking for 15 grand in attorney's fees. What is normal, right? We're about to find out, but normal is $15,000 total to handle a case like this, a non-capital felony. If you accept this as a private court-appointed attorney, you're accepting $15,000. So if you ask to quit, what do you think you should get? Even if it's totally legit and ethical and you should quit and the, the defendant is impossible, should you get the whole amount? And if you get the whole amount, what about the other lawyers? Let's hear what the JAC has to say. Amended letter of objection, hearing requested. So they want to have a hearing before the court. JAC review, reviewed what you asked for. They have no objection to the $1,800 in costs, but they do object to $15,000. Date of appointment was 2-9. Legislature established a flat fee of $15,000 for non-capital felonies, which is this case. So a multiple attorney case. How do we deal with this according to the JAC? The aggregate amounts billed for attorney's fees amongst all attorneys appointed to represent this case exceed the flat fee established in 27503. Uh, the flat fees prescribed and the General Appropriations Act comprised the full and complete compensation for private court-appointed counsel. Paragraph 3.7 says, for any case subject to a flat fee, if an attorney withdraws or is discharged prior to completion of the case, the attorney shall only be entitled to a portion of the flat fee to be determined by the court. So it doesn't seem like Cashman has the best argument based on what the statutes say, but how much will she get? Let's read further. Again, this is something I've never dealt with. I've never done court-appointed private attorney work. So I've never had to argue these exact type of motions or deal with these exact type of things. So it's kind of interesting to read through it for myself as well. And this actually makes it easier privately to have a contract. They sign, they pay up front and it is what it is. And we work the case, right? That's how we handle our criminal cases at our firm. 
Um, where the court appoints more than one private attorney, the total compensation for the initial and all subsequent attorneys may not exceed the flat fee absent proceedings under 27503. So there are still circumstances where you can go above and beyond that $15,000. Probably not more than 30 because that's 200% of $15,000. So somewhere between 15 and $30,000 is all there is for everybody is what it sounds like. JAC is arguing for only $15,000. I hope that's what it ends up as a Florida taxpayer. Uh, you were appointed to this case, but did not represent the client through the entire course of the case. Thus, the court appointed more than one private attorney to represent this client. Pursuant to 2750311, the court must apportion the flat fee among the private court appointed counsel who worked on the case. In this matter, you were the fourth of four attorneys appointed to represent the defendant. Because the court must apportion a flat fee among all the attorneys court appointed counsel, the matter must be heard before the court in a single hearing. You will need to coordinate the hearing date and time with JAC and all the attorneys listed below in the case, the following private court appointed attorneys represented by the client during the following periods. I don't know why they'd have to get Mark Consalo since he waived, but Bankowitz wants or uh, billed $15,000, Hobson billed $15,000, Cashman billed $15,000. And if we look back, Bankowitz was on the case for over a year. Hobson was on the case for six months. Cashman was on the case for four months. So it seems like Cashman should get the least, but they should all produce what Cashman produced because maybe she worked the most amount of hours in only four months, so she should get the most amount of the money. So JAC thinks that this should be this $15,000 should be split between them, and the way it would work is like Cashman build 20,000, Hobson build 10,000, or I'll say Cashman build uh, 30,000, Hobson 20,000, Bankowitz 10,000. Well, you would, so you would do the equation of 15,000, whatever that would be apportioned wise. Let's she, say she built she billed 50% total, so she should get 7,500. He gets 5,000, he gets 2,500, whatever. But that's how it should work, right? Is it should be apportioned based on the amount of time worked. The trial court will decide the amount of compensation which each attorney is entitled. As to your representation, the decision is based on work performed from 2-9 to 628. If the attorneys are agreeable to a division of the flat fee, the attorneys may execute an, an attorney settlement agreement for splitting the flat fee. As with anything in, in court cases, if you guys all agree and want to settle it, great. Let's save the judge's time. Let's save judicial economy here. If you each want to split it three ways, five, 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 let's do that. If they agree you worked more than them and they want to do 7,500, 5,000, 2,500, great. Have a settle agreement, sign it, and we'll send the money, but we're only sending 15 grand. That's what the JAC is saying. Compensation in excess of a flat fee. So how do we get the 30 grand? When the attorneys seek total compensation in excess of the flat fee, the attorneys must follow the procedures and requirements established in 5304. Uh, the motion for attorney's fees must be filed with the chief judge. The chief judge or designee must hold an evidentiary hearing on the issue whether to exceed the flat fee. So this is a lot more rigmarole to go above the 15,000. The order to pay will require written findings that the fees claimed are reasonable. The order to pay must identify the unusual and extraordinary nature of the time and efforts associated with the representation which warrant exceeding the flat fee the attorney shall have the burden to prove the entitlement to attorney's fees, costs, or related expenses. Your motion to the court to approve compensation must state whether JAC objects to any portion of the billing or the sufficiency of the documents, which she did. A copy of this letter of objection must be attached to your motion for attorney's fees, which she did. The JAC requests a hearing on your motion and requests to appear through communication equipment, such as video conferencing. Okay, so they're saying, attach this, tell the court, and they're a governmental agency, so that's why this works and they can just dictate what to do. We want to be there at the hearing uh, by video conference. If you have any questions, please email me. Please be advised the letter is valid after the issuance of the original letter. Okay? So let's take a look at what she billed for. Status hearing, conference with client, conference with ASA, emails, 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 drafting letters, beginning to review docket, reviewing info from the client, reviewing a suitcase video, draft and sign letter, continue to review progress, Begin reviewing discovery. Continue reviewing discovery. Continue reviewing discovery. Email correspondence with previous attorney. More email correspondence with previous attorney. You can see how lawyers bill. I'm so glad I don't have to bill. I don't bill on any case. I hate billing. It's like one or two cases I bill on. It's only for friends that I wish I didn't do, um, but I still do. Uh, continue recovery, reviewing discovery. Review state response to demand. Email correspondence. I'm not going to quibble with how long this took because it takes a long time. I get it. Everybody works a little differently. Uh, jail conference with client, review supplemental discovery, review depot notices, email correspondence, conference with previous counsel, draft letter to the client. By the way, conference with previous counsel is always funny. I wonder how that conversation went, especially how Sarah Boone talked about previous counsel. Draft letter to client, prepare enclosures, review score sheet, review supplemental disclosure. This is the prison time she scores, which means you usually do that if you're going to talk plea deals. 
just, just a guess. Review materials received from previous attorney. Review depots of all these different people. Review media on internet. Jurors will be exposed to. 0.9 hours, legal bites. W-E-S-H, or sorry, 12 minutes, 26 seconds, legal bites. W-E-S-H, two minutes. Court TV, 30 minutes. Parkland judge weighs in, 12 minutes. Review the digital file from the investigator. Review boxes from previous uh, counsel, which by the way, you're seeing how long this takes to review. It's going to take Sarah Boone even longer because she's not a lawyer. So this gives us an idea. I mean, 100 hours for Cashman, it's going to take Boone at least, I mean, two, three, four times as long. Is that enough time to prepare? Is she going to be able to use this motion in her appeal that it was unfair? It was impossible for her to be effective because of how much was there and how little time the judge gave her to prepare for trial. I don't know. Maybe. Review boxes from previous counsel, email correspondence, draft letters, prepare client conference, jail conference with client, uh, draft letters, draft and sign letters, review more depots, review file, jail conference with client, compare and contrast statements and depots, phone conference, Review correspondence and more documents, jail conference with client, listen to 911 calls, watch eight BWCs, review correspondence, jail conference, status letters, review materials, phone conference, jail conference, legal research, battered wild spouse syndrome. We knew that that was going to come up. Legal research on PTSD, so we know she was doing her work on it. It's interesting because we get a little insight into what some of their arguments are. Correspondence with experts. She was trying to get an expert or talking to an expert. Uh, phone conference with client. Email correspondence uh, with the jail. Correspondence with the expert. Draft the letter. Take some depositions of the detectives. Conference with the ASA. Review Brady notice. Draft and sign legal correspondence. Uh, listen to the voicemail from the media. It's interesting. Phone conference with experts. Review client statements. Review items from the jail jail conference with client, another conference with client, uh, uh, listen to voicemail from media, review media on the internet. The jurors will be exposed to court TV, 26 minutes and six minutes. KYL, not LYK, not, not me. KYL, one hour and 40 minutes. Sorry, uh, Ms. Cashman for making you watch for one hour and 40 minutes, one of our videos. But that's pretty funny when a lawyer is billing for watching our videos. That's just kind of, it's a weird world we live in, right? It still feels like the twilight zone sometimes. Research conflict of interest. Per Florida Bar Rules, gives us a little wink-wink that she had a conflict. Motion to withdraw. Set the hearing. So she billed for all this. That's interesting too. What was the conflict? It came one day after watching media videos. Four days after a conference with client. So did the client at this conference tell her about these media videos? I don't know. What videos were they specifically? I don't know. But all this happened, right? She's doing voicemails from the media, drafting letters to clients all this week. She meets with the client, watches some videos, and then she's withdrawing. Status hearing, review the letters, having hearings, motion to withdraw, draft clarification order, review clarification order, review court order regarding discovery. Very, very interesting, right? So what I think is as complex or weird as this case is, it's not considered a complex legal case. I don't think it's extraordinary. I don't think the court's going to grant $30,000 or 200% of the flat fee. I think they're going to come up with some sort of split between the $15,000. They didn't even have to try the case, which is the hardest part of the case. And that's usually included in the $15,000. So I don't think that it's going to go above and beyond the $15,000 myself if I had to guess. Um, and Sarah Boone's handling the rest now. So I think they'll find some kind of equitable distribution between the three lawyers that have claims for fees. Um, that all adds up to $15,000. That's my guess. You guys let me know what you think. Kind of wild to see us in another court pleading here in our state of Florida, but I guess that's the way of the world and the way it's going now. So I was surprised. Thank you guys for sending it to me. It kind of was an interesting read when I got it in my inbox. Uh, let me know what you think. Please hit that like button and make sure you subscribe to our channel because we're going to keep covering Sarah Boone. It's incredibly interesting and I really hope she gets a fair trial. Um, but that's all we got till next time. I'm out of here. Thanks for watching another episode of the lawyer. You know, if you enjoyed the episode, please hit the thumbs up and share with your friends who may be interested here on YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe. 
You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. And don't forget to check out the Lawyer You Know podcast with new seasons dropping every quarter. If you have a case you want to talk to us about, if it's a personal injury case, wrongful death, catastrophic injury, car accident, or slip and fall case, please email us at lawyeryouknow at gmail.com. And of course, all these links I just mentioned are included in the description below on this episode and every episode. So until next time, this is Peter Tragos, the lawyer you know.